Welcome back to episode six. I'm um, going to do a bit of a QA. and a We've got a few questions of Instagram. And yeah, we'll get straight into it. Roll the intro. Yeah, they call me a savage. Now I'm putting in work. I hustle and grind. I put in the time. Get what I deserve. Savage. What's up, bro? How you go? Straight into it, eh? Straight into it. First question. Uh, Non-negotiables slash tools to be a professional athlete and NRL player. Physical, mental. Non-negotiables. Yeah. Meaning. Meaning, I think he's coming from the perspective of um, what are the things you need that every sort of player has, every professional player has, that you actually need to make it. Ask that again from a different point of view, bro. Um, the first answer what, what, coming what to think? mind for me would yeah. be like just that resilience to okay. overcome, okay, you know, adversity, okay, okay. and all that sort of I'm stuff. With you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I think non-negotiables. Uh, you need to have some sort of discipline. Yep. All right. You need to be able to. So this will be the mental side. The we'll mental side and of then things. We'll touch yeah. on the physical as well. Um, discipline. Um, and I'm talking along the lines of, you know, being able to turn up on time, all that stuff that you do as a professional, um, turning up on time, making sure you stick into a schedule, making sure, making sure you keep into your own routine. Um, that would be uh, the sort of the mental, the mental game that <clears throat> over my own career I wasn't the best at, but um, now that I've stepped away from it, I can certainly see how it's going to benefit not only my professional career, as an athlete, but um, going into business after that as well. Yep. If that and makes sense. Yeah, and sort of, I think, yeah, he's coming from that perspective and also these rules or there's no actual, actual way to make it as a professional athlete. Like everyone goes down their different paths. Yep. We're just talking about things like discipline that yep. needs to be there. Yep. I've also found like all these rules can go out the window. There's no specific way. So if you're extremely talented, you can get away with things. Mm-hmm. So... I think you have to do a lot of self-awareness stuff. Um, I remember having mates where they could get away with things that I couldn't have because they were already in different positions talent-wise as well. And I believed I needed to be probably twice as disciplined just because I was um, not less talented, but I just needed to be on top of my game all the time. And I think some of the – and then the flip side to that is talented players – I've noticed this over a few people. So if you come in with talent and you don't have the hard work, yeah, you'll hang around for a little while, but then, you know, you're out the door and that's what you don't want to happen. Yeah. The only reason why I'm asking, bro, because no non-negotiables for me from an, an athlete point of view, it's hard for me to, to understand that, right, because I'm coming from the point of view well, where I was in it. Yep. And if my career, there weren't too many things that I – you know, understood about non-negotiables. You know, for me, if not non-negotiables, I was very like, oh, how do I explain this? You know, looking back now, there were things like when when we talk about discipline, right? I shouldn't be, I shouldn't have fucking went out and and drank all those times, right? That's a non-negotiable for for, for me now. Yep. If that makes sense, all right? I, I think I, if I look back on my, I'm along those lines of a professional now, because I know that if I don't do those things now. It's just going to help me throughout my life at this moment, right? And it's the same; those same principles apply for a professional athlete or anyone, really. Yeah, success principles exactly, are just, and always yeah, starts it's, with yeah, discipline. It's always, it's yeah, it's always that you know the stuff that we've already been saying over the, over the last couple of episodes too. You know, are you journaling? That's a non-negotiable, I, th- I think, because um, there's so many things that you think about on the daily run, and you need to be able to filter that stuff out. You know, uh, are you, like I said before, keeping to a routine? Have you got your schedule in front of you? Do you know what you're doing leading into that week? Are you preparing yourself on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis? And do you have some sort of, I think, some sort of plan? You know, what's your goals? You know, mean you have, mean you have conversations about this all the time. Yep. What's your goal, you know, in a year, six months and three months? And what are the stepping stones in order for you to get that or reach that goal? Breakdown journaling. Journaling? Course, yeah, for an athlete, say you're back in what well, preseason now. Let's yep. just play a 
oh. scenario your last week uh, preseason, and yep. uh, yeah, you're writing in your journal. This writing in, so I'm writing my journal. I've got uh, last week of preseason. Uh, the next two weeks, I'm heading back home to either New Zealand or to spend some time with the family. First thing that I'll be writing down is how I'm feeling right then and there, and what do I need to do for the next two weeks in order for me to keep on that feeling. Bro. This is a very dangerous <laughs> time around so Christmas. Very <laughs> It's a Don't very go on three day benders. It's exactly, bro. Yeah, like rhythm it, and vines. And and I think it's important, right? Because journaling for me now, I'm starting to realise is that if I write down how I'm feeling on a certain day, and then two or three or maybe even two weeks later, I start feeling shit or I start feeling that uh, I'm falling off the tracks. It's important for me to look back and see where I started going left or right. You know what I mean? So. Um, that's that's for me now. That's what journaling is now. But as a professional athlete, I think it's just a good way for you to look back on things and even even just to understand because there's so much stuff thrown at you, yep. and you didn't have you need to have that self awareness. You need to be able to go and do something and be aware of what you're doing. So it's your choice whether you want to have that beer or not. It's your choice whether you want to eat all that food. At mum was cooking at um you know the Christmas parties and all that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, and that's what I would be thinking about and journaling about. And then when I come back after, and this is this is a really good cool point I think, if I come back after and I'm fucking killing my fitness tests and I'm killing all my strength, and then I get to look back at the two weeks and see what I did, and then as a professional athlete, you should be going at the end of that year and repeating the same fucking thing and do or doing it better. See the the. The worst part is a lot of us athletes go away during the Christmas break and then we come back and we're, we're fucking three steps behind what we should have been. Yeah. You know? And that's, you know, there's a story that you could probably tell one day of how you were killing it before the Christmas break and then you come back after and you're behind the able only because you, know, you did go back or we did come back um, just behind the game. And that's, that's what I think is the, the power of journaling. Yeah, good. Yeah, I wish I had a journal back then but <laughs> yeah what he's uh, mentioning is i was at Parramatta 2012 um just finished the first half of preseason before christmas i went back to new zealand to celebrate christmas and i sort of drank and didn't really train too much like i didn't take advantage i felt at that time that my fitness was just good that i could just have a break which i was wrong i went to a festival new year's festival rhythm and vines up in gizzy yeah, drank for three days, came back. Oh no, I got sick the day before I travelled back to our first NRL um, session preseason, and we used to do the Para Park run. I don't know, it was like a, what was that, 6Ks? I don't know how long around Para Park. So the, the backs would go first, and then the forwards five minutes after us, and then I started and I was sick and... At that time, I probably should have just said to the training staff, I'm sick, I can't handle this, but I didn't at the time and I just tried to get through it. And then as we were going through the run, I just felt horrible. The forwards ended up lapping, oh, catching me. So they left five minutes before, so I was just dying and I was at the back of the, the backs. And then I felt like from that point, the window of opportunity just shut. And I went, yeah, because before I was sort of training good, Come Christmas, I was sort of getting, even at the end of that Christmas period, I was sort of, I got chucked in and you sort of know what level you're at and what um, you are in the hierarchy of centres or outside backs at the time. I was going, but after that fitness test and probably that rest of the week, I was really, really sick and I just, yeah, it was all over just from that one week and being at my age, I was 26 later on in my career and my window of opportunity was very small. Maybe I could have got away with it, but yeah. But I still had a good season, and but yeah, it just wasn't meant to be. But my since my window of opportunity, um, it's different from everyone. So if you're at that cusp of trying to make NRL or your team, um, yeah, don't mess up those two weeks over Chrissy because they can really, you know, mess everything up for the whole season. And that's like, that's the beauty of journaling or self-awareness is what's, what we're trying to get at, right? Um, you know, you only told me this story you know, a couple of weeks ago and I said, fuck, man, these guys actually really really need to hear that sort of stuff because it's important. Now, let's just say if you did go and do that or if you did, like I said, go into your Christmas break and then come back and kill it, you are aware of that stuff immediately, all right? I'm not saying what Troy's doing is wrong or, you know, us having this conversation is wrong or right either. 
But if you could, at a younger age, be self-aware of that stuff, I guarantee you you're going to be hitting the mark sooner rather than later. And that's important because the, f- the sooner that you can uh, you know, reach your goal or reach NRL or reach whatever sport you're playing in, then the longer you'll be able to maintain that as well because you do stuff like journaling, which is, which is super important, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Christmas is Christmas, but yeah. like, bro, your life's your life too. I'd sacrifice Christmas back then again. And New Year's, I wouldn't hundred percent, bro. I'd just be like, "Fuck it," I'd just stay, stay in the gym. I'd live in the gym if I had my time back again. Um, oh, camera! I think it's still going. That's it's all right. Going, yeah. So, like, your life's your life. Your opportunities are your opportunities. Don't, don't make excuses that oh, it's Christmas, it's family time. You can sacrifice two weeks if you really, you know, want to hit your goals. And I think I, I would have if someone told me what was going to happen. But you never know. Hindsight's twenty twenty. You never know, bro. <laughs> let's go. You na- never know. Let's go. Another question, eh? So, what diet adjustments would you make for someone coming into preseason overweight? Overweight. Oh, that was that was me a couple of times. I was always in fat squad. My last year of South, I was in the fat squad, so I was always in there. F- you know, the morning of training sessions at six a.m. Now, I'm not saying go and do what I did, but. Um, Leading into it, you should be thinking like you're going to start running soon. There's going to be, it's going to be heavy on the legs. You know, you don't want to be getting, you're getting your K's up. So you, your food needs to be in order. You need to get be able to get that body fat down. All right. They do skin fold tests in, in, do they still do skin fold tests? Yeah. Or DEXA scans. Or DEXA or scans or whatever. All right. You should be thinking, um, what's the standard? You know, our, I can't remember what our standards were, but now, between both of us, we know you know anything below fifteen percent body fat is you know you're in a you're, you're in a good state. Yeah, preseason's already hard enough without carrying yeah, extra the kilos. The last thing to you want to do, through. unless you've got that, like that's yeah, unless you've got that motor or that name, yeah, you know you're all good. But if you're not and you're trying to fucking the Papa Lee, um, some of them are just big lads yeah, that can carry that they shit. Can carry that and. If and you they can get away with it, you can, but most can't. So don't fucking. So don't that's, fucking that's one in a thousand. So if you think you might be a papa li'i, yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the truth. So just fucking eat properly and lean up. It's that's better. it. That's it. You know, um, you don't need those extra kilos. You know, if you're carrying too much weight, if you're carrying an injury, carrying all that sort of stuff, then it's you know you need to be looking at that stuff six to eight weeks leading into that, especially if you're going to a new team. And I think if you. The way you can figure out if you can carry your weight or not is how good your fitness with that weight on. I think Andrew Fafita was also a um, big guy, but he could run. I heard stories about him and how he was good at running. So you can get away with it if you're a big guy and you can handle that weight, but you're still killing it in the fitness test. If you're coming last in the fitness test, yeah. And they'll leave you alone too, bro. Like, you know, if they, a, lot of, a lot of the trainers... You know, if you're holding your own in those in those fitness sessions, and if you can do your thing, if you're still carrying that weight, which is what I said, if you're you know, one of those names that can just hold on to their shit, it's all good. But if you're not, then fuck, just give yourself every chance to be at the front of the pack or at the middle of the pack, not at the back of the pack, bro. Yeah. So diet adjustments, eating whole foods, man. If you just eat healthy foods, so whole foods is you know one ingredient foods, man. It's and you're doing preseason. It's hard to not lose weight. You're only putting on weight if you're eating shit like mm. takeaways, KFC, high calorie foods. But still like, calories and in, this calories brings out. this brings me back to journaling, bro. Like if you're writing down what you are eating, you know, let's just say if you're leading into preseason and you're writing down what you're eating, maybe the first two weeks. And if you can look back on that first two weeks and you can t- look at the journal and be like, "Fuck, there's heaps of gaps here that I need to be able to fill." You know, I shouldn't have had. This chocolate milk on fucking Monday morning, or I shouldn't have eaten this on that Tuesday night because I'm trying to. I'm thinking in my head, this is what how I feel. I'm thinking, I've got preseason. I need. I need to lose some of this extra body fat that I'm carrying. Um, and it's not weight. Don't think of it as weight. I like. I'm. I'm a big thing on the language that we speak. It's not weight that you're worried about. It's it's that body fat, that extra weight that you don't need. I think a lot of people think of it. Oh man, I just need to lose lose this weight. No, you need to lose body fat. Body fat. Yeah, so meat, veggies. Meat, veggies. Good sources of carbohydrates, carbohydrates. sweet potatoes, yep. rice. Don't go overboard on them because you can yep. always overeat. Stay away from the chocolate. If you really need to lose weight, then 
you know, you'll um, be disciplined with your diet. Yep. Next question. Next question. Can you train if you're injured? We come across this a lot. Fucking oath you can. I don't think these, yeah, you should be listening to some of the episodes, man. Like, you know, a couple of weeks ago we did speak about that. You know, even though your upper limb is injured, you can still do stuff for your for your lower limbs. If your lower limb's injured, you can still do stuff for your upper upper limbs. All you gotta do is just write, ask the right questions, talk to your physios, talk to your coach, and just see what you can and can't do. That's it. Yeah, I find it's a cop out. When people get injured and they don't train. Just, you've already lost the battle, to be honest. Mm. You are not answering the right questions. You probably don't have the right man- mindset or discipline, and you're probably going to end up losing in life. In everything. Yeah, you're losing everything if you have that mindset or when you get injured, okay, I'm going to just not train at all. That's not. you got to ask the right questions. Of what can I do while injured? Let's be honest, bro. If push came to shove, right? And I, like, I don't normally speak like this, but if, fuck, man, if you're in a war with me and like you're complaining about your fucking arm's a bit sore and you can't shoot a rifle next to me or some shit, I'd be like, bro, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, exactly. You want people <laughs> who just want to, you know, step break. up. Like, how how um, successful can you be in life if you've if you're already, you know, got the excuses coming along? Even if you train your bicep, if you injured your bicep or your arm, you can train your forearm or your whatever. Your calf is injured, okay. If your hammy's injured, you do your quad. You know, there's ways around it. I still remember knees over toes, bro. Do you remember when he rolled his ankle? Ben Patrick? There was this yes. thing. It was the fucking coolest thing I've ever seen. All right? He rolled his ankle and everyone was like, oh, man, fucking, you know, you're not going to be able to jump and do your dunks and that sort of stuff. He got back in two weeks, back to dunking. Like, if you saw his ankle straight after it, it was fucking super duper fight. It's like, damn, that must be sore. But he just practiced what he preaches. You know what I mean? And Locke was saying, he's... He knows his parameters. He's, he's he knows his body well enough, and he's willing to obviously ask the questions to guys around him, his peers, his mentors, and be like, "Oh, you know, what can I do? What can't I do?" Like I said, and he got back within two weeks. You know, if someone can do something so drastic as that, then anyone can do it. It's yeah, if you're a, disciplined enough, you can do anything, anything. To be honest, yeah, bro, you can half recovery times as long as you're willing to put in the work. And people always use time as an excuse. Time's never the problem. There's always busier people doing way more than you, probably two, three times more work. And, um, you know, so time's always the, usually the excuse. I don't know, look at your screen time, capture on your phone. That's the good one. It's probably a couple hours. Fucking even day. journaling, like I said, bro, that's the power of the journal. Write down the shit that you've done during the day. You know what I mean? So I, I guarantee you if you, look back, if you look back on your last 100 days, there'd be plenty of fucking time that you wasted. Ooh, I sound a bit angry at the moment, eh? I need to calm down. Yeah, this is the biggest one that pisses us off as coaches. <laughs> people just pussyfoot. It's fucking weak. <laughs> they need tough love. Fucking get some love yeah, into you, guys. There's nothing worse than someone just yeah making excuses up. It's poison. It is. It's poison. Note to everyone. Last one. Last question. Which one was the last one? Right down the bottom. What am oh, what's the best time to do mobility? The best time to do mobility is, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, as long as you're getting it done. If you're doing a proper program based on improving your mobility, then as long as you're getting done, as long as you're getting it done is the best um, time. Okay, it's not, it's not the best time, it's more the consistent, consistency and discipline to do it. Very, very simple. That's nice. Nice and simple, bro. Any more questions for us? Any Anything that... Bro, is there anything that you want to cover? Cover? Um, I think just touching on that Christmas break, since we are going into it for the players, I think it's a good time to... If we break it down into the players that are in the team, the players that want to be in the team... You know what I mean? You can get a lot of what should you be doing over this Christmas period. Okay, you should be working on those weaknesses, fixing up the body and making sure you will be ready for that first session back. Usually it's testing again to see what you've done. You usually get your program, make sure you 
you've done it, you're speaking to your trainer over that period, and you're just getting in, getting it done. Mean. Done? Done. Done, done and dusted. dusted. Merry Christmas, Merry everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Actually, no, we'll be back for, for, for New Year. Yeah, we'll do another yeah, one. Andy. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Mad. All right, done. That's us. Episode six. Thank you, bro. Perfect.